वर्णिवेशरमणीयदर्शन मंदहासुचिराननाबुज पूजित सुरनरोतमेर्मुदा धर्मनंदनम विचित धर्मनंदनम विचित श्री घनश्याम महाराज जय ओ मैटी सुप्रीम लॉर्ड और बिलवड घनश्याम महाराज पाथ में कट और लिब्रेशन और पूज्य पाथ गुरु जी ऑल ऑफ ड्यूटीज जय स्वामी नारायण The word success is very easy to speak but one who try to acquire success or one who follow the path of success what is the hardship it is not the subject of discrimination but that is only subject of experience we have seen many great business firm today not only that but many organizations those organizations are successfully done their activities today from very from very long years but behind each and every organization meaning the su- success of each and every organization one or more successful person remain without the working and hardship of without working and hard working of uh, hardship of the such successful persons not a single organizations remain success or got any or achieve any successful development in the same way just as in the world we can see that just as when we today most of the people use is the phone i mean iphone ipods ipads etc but when one cons- when one observe or examine the situation of iphone and ipad and ipods etc then behind that everybody see the uh, company apple but behind the success of apple we all know the one successful person and that is steve jobs in the nearest past that is the situation in the world that when one speak apple then immediately one can speak steve jobs both word is just similar but now why because of the successful person meaning steve jobs and that's why it can, uh, he can became a uh, identity of apple and apple is become identity of steve jobs now in the swaminarayan sampradaya this is also kind of organization in our this organization this our holy fellowship without a uh, hardship without hard working and struggling and suffering N- no any person or organization can become success in the same way our swaminarayan fellowship just as we have seen that behind the success of apple steve jobs hard working is remain there in the same way the success and development of our swaminarayan sampradaya the struggling and suffering of our thousands of non santo was there we can see only development of our sampraday but we cannot see easily the struggling and suffering which experienced by those non santo but among those non santo the foremost the most senior sant or great guru muktanand swami he was very great sant amongst all of the thousands of santo of bhagwan swami narayan to be a great is not only acquire a position of or a status but 
to become a great that is behind becoming a great that is a uh, struggling and suffering without struggling and suffering nobody can acquire greatness in life in the same way sadguru muktanand swami he became a great and the most senior sant of bhagwan swami narayan and his fellowship but only because he had struggle and suffer many many things not only that but even the opponents and the non believers they always many times happen that they all try to kill muktanand swami they believe that if we kill muktanand swami then the swami narayan fellowship will not grow more and that is why the many times either by giving poison or by any other means they try to kill muktanand swami but any other way bhagwan swami narayan is the protector of muktanand swami and that is why muktanand swami didn't hurt even a single time when we talking about struggling and suffering then we can see the success of our puja guru ji in many ways not only this worldly ways not in spirituality but many other ways but be- before this success guru ji has struggle and suffer many many ways even at the beginning of our gurukul organization in kandar in india at the beginning of organization at that at that time even guru ji had to suffer many fast because of the limited food stuff but today we can see the growth and development but be, before behind this growth and development before behind this happiness the struggle of guru ji is remain we should never forget this struggle and suffering which guru ji had experience now muktanand swami just as most of the non believers and the opponents of swami narayan faith they always try to kill muktanand swami because they believe muktanand swami was foremost and the great sant of bhagwan swami narayan and if we kill muktanand swami then there is no swami narayan fellowship and there is no any growth and no development and no any obstacle for us to enjoy sensual gratification once upon a time muktanand swami along with his another santo according to bhagwan swami narayan's command muktanand swami with another santo went to amdavad at the time amdavad was one of the great city in gujarat and that is why there is there are so many thousands and millions of people live there but not only people live there but some uh, uh, some kinds of spiritual so called spiritual person persons meaning a so called sadhu meaning a fak sadhu they also living there there are thousands of such uh, such bawas live there in amdavad at the time they all opponents of our swami narayan faith bhagwan swami narayan he had commanded his santo and devotees to follow righteousness and bhagwan swami narayan's devotees and santo they always follow righteousness and never break even a single commands code and conducts of life li- living a spiritual and social sp- prosperous life and that's why even ordinary person who is wise can uh, see single time a uh, devotee or a sant of bhagwan swami narayan and then he definitely become a devotee because when he observe the behavior and inner qualities of santo and devotees and when he saw the another dev uh, another kinds of so called sadhu meaning bhava and their behavior then he automatically 
discriminate between what is right and what is false what is wrong and that's why they be all become a uh, duty of bhagwan swami narayan and that is why those bawas they try to kill our santo and devotees now muktanan swami and the other santo they went into amdavad and they were traveling one house to another for preaching our satsang course and conducts our bhagwan swami narayan's greatness and glory all these things was but once upon a time those bawa gather at one place and they discuss with each other what to do to finish this swami narayan faith now after after a long meeting they have they had a conclusion that if we kill muktanand swami he was the great and the foremost and senior sant of bhagwan swami narayan if we kill him then there is no any other leader in the faith and that's why the faith will would be stop and deciding this one of the opponents one of the non believer this bawa he became a so called satsangi meaning a devotee of bhagwan swami narayan he was not actual devotee but he just applied tilak chandlo and some uh genuine rays and everything now once he came in assembly muktanand swami was preaching a glory and greatness of bhagwan swami narayan this non believer he also came in the assembly and sat there after an assembly when assembly is finished all the devotees one by one they came near santo and offer something some some devotee uh, offer foods some devotee offer flowers in this way all the devotees one by one came to muktanand swami and other santo and offer something to santo now this non believer he had on the single intention in his mind and that is to kill muktanand swami anyhow and that is why to fulfill his this bad intention he came in the assembly with all kinds of preparation he came with a bowl of food and a sweet but the sweet is different kind he had mixed some strong poison into this sweet whoever ate this sweet will definitely meet death at the same time when this non believer came to muktanand swami he offered to this prasad to muktanand swami muktanand swami put the bowl uh by his side he had not even touch the sweet now in this way sri ji maharaj bhagwan swami narayan he he is the all doer he is the creator of thoughts in our minds in this way bhagwan himself changed muktanand swami's mind and he inspired muktanand swami not to touch even the sweet and in this way bhagwan swami had saved and protected his santo now just as this is this is first endeavor to kill muktanand swami that is fail now another day that non believer came again in the assembly now today he came with sandalwood paste to apply on forehead for pujan of santo because he thought in his mind that i have offered sweet with poison but santo did not eat and so they all living but if i he had mixed a kind of very strong chemical into this sandalwood paste that even one who touched this chemical uh, the uh, even one who touched this chemical with one's finger the skin of that finger would immediately burn and remove this is what the high density of this chemical he had chemical he, he had mixed this chemical into sandalwood paste and now with with the intention of killing muktanand swami he came with in uh, came with this sandalwood paste mixed with such a dangerous chemical and came in assembly and sat there now after an assembly as usual after one by one devotee came to santo and offered something to santo 
now that non believer also came to Muk- near muktan and swami he applied sandalwood paste on muktan and swami's forehead and thereafter another santos also but due to sri ji maharaj compassionate nature he is very kind and he is very bhagwan swami is the most compassionate supreme personality and that's why he also uh, he only compensated only on his duty is not the on non believer magically muktanand swami did not have anything on his forehead he just feel some cool sandal or paste on his forehead not anything else but on the other hand the non believer who had applied sandal or paste on muktanand swami's forehead the skin of his fingers removed burn and removed immediately now he was crying loudly because there is not a not a little pain it was too much pain and that's why he was crying loudly then all the devotees gathered there and asked what had happened then finally he accepted his mistake he said I have an intention to kill Muktanand Swami and that's why I have mixed this chemical into this sandalwood paste and applied on Muktanand Swami's forehead but your lord Bhagwan Swami is a true god and that is why he had protected him otherwise you all can see my fingers in this way Bhagwan Swami Narayan had protected Muktanand Swami two times in Ahmedabad Now once again according to Bhagwan Swami Narayan's command Muktanand Swami and other santo they went to Surat to preaching satsang's perspective to the devotees In the Surat the same situation what in what was the situation in Ahmedabad Now in Surat those non believers they gather and they also decided to kill Muktanand Swami Now at that time Santo had no any mandir and no any other situation or condition to eat food because there is no money with the sant and there was no there were no many duties in the surat and that's why bhagwan swami narayan had commanded to santo which your village or city you go ask for begging one house to another and whatever you earn from this begging whatever food you have you should offer it first to god and then after you should partake it after in this way santo all the santo they wandering uh, they traveling one house to another and they ask for uh, they begging for food some devotees or some gentleman person they give some food and some give food stuffs in this way all provided santo food this non believer they had decided to kill muktan and swami and another santo he had give poison mixed with the food and after coming back to their residence santo had offered this food to bhagwan and then after santo said for dan first ten santo they first eat their lunch whatever they earned in begging now after eating they all ten santo they just fell unconscious they have no any energy even they could not speak a word now in this situation they all thinking in their mind that now we have no any chance to live more but if this is the last time and if we have darshan of bhagwan swami narayan when those santo was thinking in this way bhagwan swami narayan divinely appeared there and all those sant- all those ten santo they have a uh, darshan of bhagwan swami narayan by only by having a darshan of bhagwan swami narayan they all gradually came in consciousness 
and they all regained their strength and health even the strong poison could not effect on their body they all living healthy this is what the miracles happen in life of this santo and muktanand swami bhagwan swami narayan protected many times many many santo we have before described and see what her experience in the life of many other nan santo now today in this chapter 135 sadguru niskuran swami describes the incidents happen miraculous incident happen in life of muktanand swami and other santo but today we have discuss about this muktanand swami's incident what muktanand swami and other santo had experience because of bhagwan swami narayan's divine presence forever with them and if we also keep a constant contemplation on the form of god or if we remember bhagwan bhagwan will also remember us and he will protect us just just as the same way he had protected muktanand swami and other santo bhagwan swami narayan will also protect us in each and every condition of our life but for that we have to remember him we have to chant his holy mantra swami narayan forever as well as we have to try to contemplate his divine form in our mind this is what the glimpse of this bhakta chintamani's word 35 chapter the chapter is not concluded the chapter is half half completed here and sadguru niskuran swami described the another incident happen in another santo but that will describe in next sunday by saying this jai swami narayan shri ganeshyam maharajani jai संत कृपाए सुख उपजे संत कृपा थी सरे काम संत कृपा थी पामी पूरन पुरुषोत्तम दाम काम दुधा कल्प तरु पारस चिंता मनि चार संत समान ते एक नहीं में मन मा करो विचार संत समान ते एक नहीं में मन मा करो विचार घनश्याम महाराज नी जय हरि कृष्ण महाराज नी जय स्वामी नारायण भगवान नी जय सुप्रीम ऑल माइटी आवर बिलवेड Gansham Maharaj, pathmaker to our liberation, Puja Pad Guruji, Puja Santo, and devotees. Jai Swami Narayan. You know, in our daily vocabulary, whenever we speak, we use certain words that we might not even know the meaning of, or words such as that do not even pertain. 100% to our life. Let me give you an example. Suppose you're having a conversation with someone and you say the person asks you. It's kind of like an interview. 
what kind of person are you? You say, I am a genuine person. Now, when you say this, you are a genuine person, do you know exactly the characteristics of a person who is genuine? Do you know exactly that a genuine person behaves in this fashion, in this place, or in this fashion, in this area, or with this person he would talk like this, and with this person he would talk like this? This is just one example. Let me give you another one. Sometimes you are talking just in general, describing yourself, and say, no, no, I'm a person with good character, meaning moral. Sadachar, we can say in Gujarati. Now, what are the standards of a person who has good moral, good character? Do we know them exactly to at least define ourselves? That I have good character, I have good moral. Meaning, words are just words. But when we apply it to ourselves and we don't know exactly the meaning of it, or we don't know if it really applies to it, us at 100% degree, then they kind of blow up in the air, meaning they have no effect. Similarly, in satsang, when we come to a mandir, and with our parents, they bring us to mandir, and it starts to become a habit. And a couple years go by, two, three, four, five years, six years. And then, you know, in the inner society of where you live, your relatives, your friends, they ask you, oh, so you go to mandir, yeah? And what do you say? I don't only go to mandir, I'm a satsangi. Look, I have a tilak chanlo and I have a kanti. I'm a satsangi. This is what we say. But my question to you today is, do we really know what the definition of a satsangi is? Do we really, can we really define that a satsangi has these particular characteristics? Meaning, today's topic is on the lines of satsang. First and foremost, if anyone doesn't know, satsang means sat, we can break those words in half. Sat means truth, and sang means company. To have the company of a true person, let's just put it right now, is called satsang. Now, according to the Vachnamrut, according to Sriji Maharaj's words, those are the only words I'll take to define what satsang is because there is no words higher than God's words, right? So according to the Vachnamrut, Gudara Middle Chapter, 54th Vachnamrut, there is a question asked. First, Maharaj speaks and he says, I am not pleased by a person who does Ashtang Yoga or a person who does Dan, meaning donations, or a person who does a lot of penance, or vrat, or a lot of chanting, or does a lot of pilgrimages, yatras, as I am pleased with a person who possesses satsang. Then Bhagwan asks the crowd, what is satsang? This is the definition according to Maharaj, what is satsang? No one could reply. So Maharaj says, satsang is to have Atma buddhi, meaning firm attachment to the ekantic saint, meaning to the true God realized saint. This is called satsang. Let me give you an example. When you have a glass of water and you just put one spoon of salt inside of the water and you take it and you take your spoon and you pretty much dissolve the salt in the water, you can't see the salt anymore. Then you take that glass and you have a stuff and you pour that glass into a small vessel and you start to warm it up. You warm it up so much that all the water burns. Can you see the salt? Yes, right? That's correct. You can see the salt. Meaning, just the water burns away. The salt is still visible to your eyes. In the opposite form, Suppose you have a glass of milk, same amount, same 
exact everything same and you take a spoon of sugar and you melt and you put it in and you stir it around again and then same process same temperature all the variables are the same you pour it inside the vessel and you warm it up at the same temperature and you burn all the milk can you see the sugar no where did it go it's a question right we should ask scientists where does the sugar go just like how the sugar melted inside the milk and it was not visible after burning the milk in the same way when one's atma meaning when one's soul completely attaches itself to such a saint this is called satsang when you completely melt yourself with the true saint when your existence does not you have no existence anymore when you do have some kind of existence that I am here Inus or minus then it's still like the salt and water but when your ego completely melts when you don't have any kind of minus or Inus then it's like the milk and the sugar in the exact same way satsang can be defined in that manner now to make this example to make this lecture easier I've gathered a couple of stories in the time of Bhagwan Charitras divine incidents that can help you really realize the value of satsang the value of attaching oneself to such a saint so at one time Sadguru Muktanan Swami was in the village of Gadpur taking a shower bathing you can say and Swami was done bathing and he got out and saints wear a special code of clothes underneath is called a dhotyu and the top part is a kiss kiss you so Swami had taken a shower and now he was re he removed the under part dhotyu and he was going into his dry clothes and wearing his clothes and the dhoti was just on the side and a devotee by the name of Punja Bhagat came from the village of Sanjangpur and he had intense affection for Swami very much so and he saw Swami's dhoti there wet so what do you have to do you have to wash it a little bit in the water right so Punja Bhagat decided that you know he wanted to wash the dhoti just for a service so he was ready to touch the dhotyu and there Muktan Swami said stop Punja Bhagat he asked are you a Sainkh Yogi or are you a Karma Yogi meaning are you, do you follow the vows of a householder or do you follow the vows of a saint obviously Punja Bhagat was a householder so he replied to Swami Swami I follow the vows of a householder Swami says that you cannot touch my dhotyu then Please do not wash it. I will wash it myself. And there, in Punjab Bhagat's heart, intense, intense rage occurred that I myself are not eligible to watch such wash such a great saint's dhotyu. Then forget this household life. What he did was he washed the dhotyu, and right after he told Swami that Swami from this day on I am now yours I want to become a saint and now please make me your saint but I will not go back into the sansar I will not go back into the household life because you are such a saint and I could not receive your service so this is my dedication this is called satsang how just by a mere duty just by mere seva he could not perform it was a small seva he just had to he just wanted to wash Swami's dhotyu but Swami re replied that since you are not a uh, uh, Sankh Yogi you cannot wash the dhotyu so he abandoned his whole life his whole family his whole possessions just to please Swami and just to receive his blessings this is called satsang meaning he did not do anything for himself he became selfless the meaning of Atma Buddhi is to pretty much have just how we have affection for our body just like we have affection we should have 
the saint or more affection for such a saint. Not only that, but another example I'm reminded of is of Uga Kajar from the village of Gadpur again. So at one time in the assembly, Shriji Marj was sitting with his saints and devotees, and Swami or Maharaj himself asked his saints that how many murtis do you have in your puja? Meaning, Santo said, some Santo said two, three, four, five, you know, whatever murtis they like, they would do the puja of every day. Then when Uga Khatra's turn came, Uga Khatra replied, 500 murtis. Maharaj said, how do you have 500 murtis? So he said, name your 500 murtis. Uka Kachar said, Muktanan Swami, Gopanan Swami, Gunatitanan Swami, Brahmanan Swami, Nityanan Swami. These are all my murtis. So I, he said, I worship them every day. So Maharaj said, how do you worship them? See, what Maharaj wanted to do was have the santos and the devotees listen to what how uh, Bhagat uh, worshipped the Murtis Maharaj already knew How he worshipped the Murtis So Ukakachar started He said at 3 a.m. in the morning I wake up After waking up I go to the Dharamshara And there There are pots Before In those days They did not have facilities as bathrooms So in pots Santos urinated So those pots Full of urine Two, three, four, five pots he would pick them up on his head, carry them far away, pour them, all five, six pots, whatever, how many amount there were, he would do that. Then he would take a shower, and then what he would do is from Gadpur to the Gela River, it's probably one kilometer, he would sweep the whole road because of thorns, sharp rocks, because the santos, would go from Gadpur Dharamshara to Gela River for Snan at about 5 a.m. So he would clean the road. After that, when Santos would go to the Gela River to take a shower, he would go to the Dharamshara and he would sweep over there. Then after sweeping the Dharamshara, the six saints that would live in the Dharamshara that could not get up, he would get pots of water from them, from Gela, and he would give them a bath each and every saint after giving each and every saint a bath he would put on clothes of each and every saint and he would wash each and every saint's dhotya himself after doing that he would give massages to each and every saint whoever's feet are hurting whoever's head's hurting whatever whatever problem they had then he would give them medicine after giving them medicine, whatever santos they might need, something special care because they're sick, he would provide for them. After providing for them, then he himself would do his daily routine. Hearing this, Maharaj said, this is our true sevak. Because look at how much Atma Buddhi he has. He did not care about his sleep 3 a.m. in the morning. From 3 a.m. to 7 a.m., he would four hours non-stop seva of santos. Just think about how minute. He would sweep from Gadpur to Gela River because of small thorns and sharp rocks. Imagine how much divya buddhi he has for santos, that santos do not injure their feet. Not only that, but suppose there's five santos that are sick, right? Five of them. Now, each one one pot would only go on one head, right? Now Gela to Gadpur is one kilometer, right? He would walk one kilometer, get water again for five times like that, back and forth. So you're talking about ten kilometer ten kilometers just of seva, just in four hour span. This is the kind of Atma Buddhi, this is the kind of affection that rises, that elevates a person in satsang, so much so that he becomes ekantik, he becomes one with God. You know, just because not only he's sitting here in the mandir, but because it's reality, and I'm, exa I'm reminded 
that here, Asid Bay, he comes every day, every night to Mandir. He is a devotee, uh, he is a regular devotee of ours. And he would come every day, and whatever seva there is for Santos, whatever it is, if Santos asks for something, or Santos uh, patari, meaning bad, or if Santos needs something, what not, or Santos need uh, some kind of, if they're sick, if, if they need some kind of vix or something rubbed on them. I remember that one time I was sick, and uh, it was in the old apartment we used to live. And there, the whole, I, I couldn't get up. So he pretty much massaged my whole body with vix, and I still remember it. Meaning he does not, he has a life, he has a store, he has a family, he has a business, he has many things. Yet, putting that aside and spending time for santos, serving them in such a egoless manner, it's a very great task. And only a person who has Atma Buddhi can do this. This can be seen by many devotees in our mandir. But such kind of Atma Buddhi, such kind of affection is the only way that one can attain Akshradam. Lastly, I'm reminded of a story of a devotee by the name of Sadasiv. Sadasiv from the village of Kambat in the region of Bal. Now, Sadasiv was a very, very rich devotee of Bhagwan Swami Narayan. And he had just made a huge haveli, a mansion in Kambat. And what he wanted to do is he had affection for Gopan and Swami. So he wanted to invite Swami with Thakurji. So Swami would do Padramni, do Thar there. And then, so the whole mansion would be blessed by Swami's uh, blessings. So he decided to go to Vadodara to call Swami and tell him to come with him to um, Kambat. So when he went there, he told Swami about, Swami, I have made a great Haveli, great mansion. It has this many rooms and it has this many floors and it's decorated in this manner and I have brought wood from Surat and I have brought the furniture from Vadodara and all these kinds of things. He would very, very much pl pledge and plead about his big mansion. And not only that, not to only to Swami, but to other santos and whoever he, me whoever he meets, he would tell them that I have this great mansion. So Gopan Swami observed Sadasiu's behavior and he saw that Sadasiu's Atma, his Jiu, has become bound by this mansion because he cannot stop thinking about the mansion. So Gopan Swami said, Sadasiu, we'll go to your mansion, but why don't you stay here with me for a couple of days? And let's do satsang. Listen to Kathavarta. We'll give you prasad here. You can have a place to stay. Sadasu had affection, Atma Buddhi, with Gopar and Swami. So he said, Yes, Swami, of course. Why not? So he sat. And every day, Swami would start his preachings. And slowly, slowly, he would start talking about how this whole world is perishable. This whole Brahman, this universe is perishable. Everything was made from dirt and will go back to dirt. All these kind of talks Swami started to uh, put into Sadasiu's head. So Sadasiu listened and listened. He didn't ask any questions. And then one of the days, a letter came for Sadasiu. So the letter, the postman gave the letter to the Santos, and the Santos gave the letter to Gopan Swami. The Gopan Swami opened the letter and he started to read. And it said that this letter is for Sadasu. Your mansion has burned down and is now ashes. All of a sudden, we don't know the reason, but it has burned down. This is to notify you. Now Gopan Swami saw that Sadasu's bandhan, meaning how he was bound to his mansion, had not completely or was not completely removed from his heart. So he didn't give the letter right away. If he would have gave the letter right away, he would have got a heart attack or at least some kind of mental breakdown. 
So Swami, what he did was he folded the letter back and where he sat, the gadi, he just tucked it underneath. And again, continued and started to talk about how this world is perishable and this Brahman is perishable and everything made uh, from this whole uh, Brahman is dur or dirt and etc. so on and so on. God is truth, santos are the truth and everything else is false. These kind of talks continued. And after a couple days, when Swami saw so that's his behavior, character, his jiu, he could see that I think he is not bound anymore. Just to check, Swami asked, Sadasu, what if I told you that your mansion in Kambat has burned down? Sadasu replied, Who cares, Swami, if it's burned down? Nothing will happen to me. So, Gopan Swami's checking point was right. So then he took the letter out underneath his uh, gadi and he gave it to Sadasu. Sadasu opened the letter and read it and saw and read that his mansion was burned down. He himself ripped the paper up and said, no problem, Swami. Small story, big principle. What's the principle? The soul, many numerous souls, are attached to many different things. But those who attach themselves to such a saint become detached from everything else but God. That's the principle. Meaning, we have to do everything in satsang. Today, Pujini Skam Swami was reading Swamini Vato, and there, uh, there was this Vat in uh, Gunathen uh, Swami's Vat, Pratham uh, Prakarming Chapter 1, 237th talk. There, Swami said that this talk cannot be understood for a hundred years. What talk? That one should join oneself with two good saints and three good devotees. This talk cannot be understood for 100 years. Why? Because by joining oneself with such a saint, one's detachment for everything occurs and one becomes attached to God. In religion, this is our ultimate goal. This is our ultimate destination. So, thinking of these stories, thinking of these examples, one should understand the factor and the importance that to have Atma Buddhi with such a saint is the very purpose of staying in satsang, is the very purpose of even doing satsang or even coming into religion. But not to just daily go on at, or even weekly go on as a habit and come to Mandir and just as a habitual kind of activity get out from Mandir, next week come to Mandir. Not like that. But to really join oneself with such a saint is the very cause of satsang. Gansham Maharaj Nije Sripatim Sridharam Sarvadevishwaram Bhakti Dharmatmanam Vasudevam Hari Madhavam Kesavam Kamadam Garanam Swaminarayanam Nilakantham Bhaji Gansham Maharaj Nije